Hello and welcome to the podcast thing, the only po- uh, podcast that got uh, what, that got a new technical problem each wi- each new episode. I'm Tris and this is Jack. Why? Why do I continue to do this? Hello, Jack, and here's um uh, our and we got a special guest, and it's an actual special guest this time. Um, it's one of our. It's how one of our friends. Um, we invited him on because he's cool and that our, uh, our and uh, also because our um, uh, actual planned guest couldn't come. It's Ian from uh, the um, uh, from Twitter.com um, uh, slash votes. Why is your name Fonts? Like, is is it because like you just like the letter F? Yeah, I guess you could say that. Well, that's a, that's an exciting reason to go with that name. Yeah, yeah I mean, very exciting. Also, my last name starts with that. Yeah. So let's explain why we couldn't get our um previous guests, or the guests that we really wanted to be on this episode on here. Yeah. Also, okay, so we initially wanted to have um, Kiryu and um, Red Wine, two um, artists and two big gays, that, and to talk about um, Yuri. I think we already um, said uh, that in another podcast that isn't edited yet because I was busy. Um, and they couldn't come because they don't have really have time for voice chat. So um, basically, what we uh, did is um, like Ian was always kind of uh, someone I really wanted to have on the podcast, and uh, so we um, made him like kind of a a replacement guests so like a in so um but because like he kind of got out of the server we made like a group dm for the podcasting recording room probably i'm going to like remove um, stuff from the podcasting on my server i'm still going to link my server on the, well, the, I was the one. yeah I I was the one who, like, suggested we make the DM room, mainly because, like, I was kind of just, like, annoyed with the quality of, like, you know, the server's, like, voice chat. Oh, yeah, it's, it, it is much better now, now we, that we are in the, um, in the DM, I'm, I agree. Yeah, it may be better, but you still stutter. Yeah, I mean, I can. Uh, I'm still porky. I'm still a porky pig. You know? But and, but any anyway, p- uh, kind. Would you um, uh, like to um, uh, present your uh, selfie in to the pub to like the twenty people who are gonna watch this? Oh, sure thing. What should I say? Just introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Ian. He's my um, uh, favorite. He's God. Yeah, and he's my favorite uh, director, tied with Naoko Yamada, because uh, uh, because say it, Jack. Because you're a K-On fanboy. So am I. And now we're gonna like we. Uh, I'm probably gonna add in the editing like a. Uh, um, a foo a foo a time in that uh, part because I kind of want to put like more of sound bites and because now it's done in Audacity it's it's much easier to add them. Yeah, I remember like you said the sound quality in the fifth episode, the first one we did in Audacity, was much better than like what we've done so far. Yeah, like the fan, it's 
it's more like the fan which is much less um, there, you know, and it already kind of um, it was already kind of better with um, episode four, even though it had the same problems as the as the others. Anyway, let, let's get on to the, the news, the weeaboo news. Yeah. Right to the news. You know, we never did that reference before. Okay, so... Um, hmm... Okay, I'm gonna, we're gonna start with st stuff that are relevant instead of like uh, uh, doing like uh, fucking from oldest to um, newest. Okay, so um, news: the, uh, Rick and Morty has been renewed for seventy episodes. <laughs> well, but uh, but dub dub, I guess. Guys, guess what? I turned myself into a renewal of 70 episodes. I'm, I'm stealing repetitive Rick. Oh god! I mean, that does that mean it's gonna? Does that mean it's gonna renewed for seven for seven seasons? Well, probably, but. You know, you never know what they could do. They could just, like, um, you know, just divide it all into, like, two seasons of 35 episodes each, you know. I mean, the only reason they did it is because they know Rick and Morty merchandise still makes the money. And the Even if, like, the fan base is, like, um, reputation has been soiled over the years. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. I have actually never watched her. Yeah, that's because you never watch American cartoons. Well, I used to. Years. I don't know. I'm 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 just being mean to everyone today. Yeah, but I'm it's your. It's because I'm always because I always love because it's funny. Yeah, he's it's not funny. It's his character. But yeah, like, I'm pretty sure it's because Adult Swim is like freaking out, like, they cancel Aqua Teen, um, most of their uh, new stuff, uh, most of their new stuff aren't as popular, and uh, the Venture Brothers takes years to make, so they need like something that they can like, that will be successful for years and premiere um, new stuff a, uh, a lot. And Rick and Morty is the. Man, if, if they just wanted to, like, make new stuff, they could have just, like, made more new episodes, ordered more episodes of Ball and Masters. Which, by the way, is a better show than Rick and Morty. Ball and Masters looks pretty cool. Yeah. I'm um, so sorry. Like the, dissing you on not watching Western cartoons again. It's I always, good. I always, I always like to be a jerk because it's, cause it's just who I am. Also, like the last um, Adult Swim cartoon that he, I am. Um, oh wait, he, he he's gone. Okay, what did we do? Don't worry, I'm gonna cut this off. Okay. But yeah, I was gonna s say oh, that. Oh, he came back. Oh. Hey. Oh, he came back. He's back. <laughs> Oh, I see. 
and don't worry I'm gonna cut this out in editing but yeah what as I was saying like the last adult swim cartoon that I s that um, I watched um, as it premiered was like the jellies because it I was in America when it premiered so you saw super jail I saw one episode of super jail It's okay. I mean, I'm not as crazy about the story of it, but I love the animation. Oh, I'm I'm watch I watch Super Gel solely for the animation. But anyway. Anyway, let's let's move on. Yeah, like I'm. <laughs> I'm throwing like this stuff that is um, uh, somewhat um, uh, that are uh, somewhat western. Okay, okay, so um. Okay, okay, I got something here. Um, freaking Hasbro bought Power Rangers. Yeah, that's what it's. Michael Bay's Power Rangers. Plan. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's not really animation, but I guess like Tokutatsu um, works in there because we are going to have August in, ne in the next podcast. Yeah, if he decides to like join us, like I swear he only shows up like randomly just to post something and then he just leaves. Yeah. Or he comes, he says nothing, and steal our jokes. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I thought it'd be funny if, like, he just showed up just to, like, talk about how he'll never get an Akko or your camp in Android, and then he just leaves. <laughs> this is gonna be the... It's gonna... Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, Lotte. Akko's the worst witch in the witch academia fight. No, there are no worse witches except maybe the one who's basically Kirby because she does nothing but eat. No! Lotte is best witch. Lotte, Lotte is the best witch. Lotte is great. But anyway, like, um, uh, for, um, like, Power Rangers being bought by Asbro, like, when did, like, Saban took, uh, took the rights for, um, uh, Power Rangers and Digimon from Pokemon again? Because, uh, now they're, like, losing Power Rangers again? Damn, that like that live action movie must now, have at this point. must have really sucked. I'm sorry, this is you who cutting me yeah, out. You know, no one really wanted. Weird. No one wanted a Power Rangers movie. That's why it sucked and failed. Yeah. And actually, make money. I don't know. To be honest, I'd watch the Digimon movie all uh, day be uh, for re before actually watching the Power Rangers movie. Because, because at least the Digimon oh, movie crap. got all got all star. Oh, also, um, Smith messaged me and said we can't do the podcast next time, but we'll do it some other time. How come? I don't know. Maybe yeah. because he doesn't have, like, a microphone to talk into. That makes sense. Yeah. 
but we can do like another podcast where it's just um, uh, with both of us. The only times we uh, did that, it was the only it was the pod it was the two podcasts that were uh, that was on our that was uh, that were on our ironically terrible. But yeah, like, Asbro is getting super um, big, and uh, Saban is, is well, being Saban, and being, like, mostly invisible these days. But um, another Western news is that um, we got a few um, names for the... Um, uh, for the Trolls sequel, and I don't know any of those people, Jack. What is this fucking news? I don't... Who are these guys? I... It's because they're making a sequel to a DreamWorks movie no one likes, and I thought it'd be really funny to mess with y'all. Why are they making a sequel to Trolls? I don't get it. Because they always make sequels for films that they think perform reasonably well. Early. Like, I thought Trolls Wars was meh. Yeah, I remember Jim said that film was fascist propaganda. <laughs> that video was fucking great. those tricks TV shows like Boss Baby, Kung Fu Panda, the King Julian one, the Puss in Boots one. Yeah, that one. Peabody, Peabody's and Sherman is the only good one, to be honest. Of the, um, uh, like, like, um, out of all the Netflix DreamWorks shows, uh, Peabody and Sherman, and probably Voltron, but I haven't seen it yet, are the, ol <laughs> are the only good ones. They're not even DreamWorks it's original properties, they were just acquired by the company. Yeah. Yeah, what? Who created Peabody and Sherman again? It's J. Ward. J. So they were like the segment on Rocky and Mulwinkle. A, a, yeah, but there's a story about it's not so before the movie, but it wasn't so. But we do know DreamWorks is making a Rocky and Bullwinkle show for Amazon. And it looks pretty nice, I think. Remember the live action movie? No, no I don't want to remember. I remember Doug's Walker video on it. Yeah, that's exactly why I don't want to remember the movie. Yeah. Uh, it's just like that movie. Okay, like, is that it for like Western? Yeah, uh, yeah, I think so. And we are going, and we are going to the most recent weaboo shit news. Um, okay, so the world is fucking ending because um, fucking Bang Dream is getting two more seasons. I, I, I want to die. Please, please kill me now. What's Bang Dream? What exactly is this crap? Okay, so I'm okay. I'm, I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna explain to y'all what is fucking Bang Dream, and uh, though I can't, I can't uh, like um. Um, I, 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 I can't, this fucking name is like fucking terrible, but, okay, so Bang Dream is kind of like, it's kind of like, like, idol shit, but it's more like band, but they, but it's more like an actual band, so, um, actually the songs aren't that terrible, but, the anime was pretty shit, and nobody cared for it in the West before the um, like the Bang Dream app uh, came out, and now it's like pretty um, like it's pretty popular 
here. So um, now that it's pretty, that it's getting popular, there like the um, that the fucking studio, the fuck that fucking studio that it Zebex is like milking the shit out of it because yes, it's another show from another shitty show from them. Oh, so it's literally just like K on meets Idol Master, but uh, ten times worse yeah. than either one. Yeah, the worst, the ironic part about it is that some of their anime covers of um, Bang Dream are actually pretty good. Like their cover of Cool Angel Feces is good. But like it doesn't sound like um, idol things. Well, some sounds like idol things. Some like sound like band, real like band stuff. It's it's kind of weird because they have different styles and diff and I don't know. The only interaction I got from Bang Dream is that one ranking video of all of their um, anime covers because I was bored and watched that video. stop listening to like anime cover songs it's gonna like turn your brain to mush our brain turned to mush years ago once we got the internet next <laughs> but yeah bank dream is the worst name I ever heard for a fucking uh, for a freaking multimedia project about girls you want to know what the worst anime name I've ever heard is? Darling in the Franks. <laughs> yeah. Alright, what, what other weep shit do we got? You all know who killed my children, Darling in the Franks. Um. Here, I'll check. Um, oh yeah, Mob Psycho 100, an anime that saw and forgot about is getting a second season. People definitely haven't forgotten about Mob. No, it's still one of my no, favorites. No, I pretty much don't talk about it. Yeah, like, it got like its first... I'm gonna be honest with you guys, I liked it more than One Punch Man. I did too. I haven't even seen One Punch Man in Fidelity. Like, uh, One Punch Man is good for like a getaway anime, but uh, Mob Psycho is, m is like fucking amazing but and it's I'm glad it's getting a second season because like I want to see more of the um, I, I want to see more of it adapted into this like freaking amazing style and it, and the staff is pretty much the same as the first season so it's not getting like the shit treatment that um, One Punch Man season 2 is getting just gotta wait for it to air on a tsunami here in the states yeah you know no one watches adult swim anymore yeah you are the That's because like anime on tv in the west is just getting gradually less popular thanks to streaming yeah yeah and I mean, uh, it could be worse. It could be um, uh, you. It could be like our tsunami, where the only animes we got is like Dragon Ball Super and My Hero Academia season one. <laughs> and the yeah, rest. Yeah, he 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 he's so hyped. Like, and the rest of the programming is superhero shows because it's based on the Asian tsunami. They cancelled the Asian tsunami. Yeah, and brought really? it... Why? Low ratings. And, but they thought it was a good idea to brought it in France, to brought this failed version of the, the block into a full channel in France. Yeah, he, if you know Tris real well, he loves talking about French TV 
channels and French dubs. It's interesting because I'm like, like I'm. I mean, look at me. I'm a French guy who is extremely Americanized, also in a weeaboo. I'm pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much a definition of of globalization. And I also got some. Uh, but and you also we got like uh, more news, yeah. Um, like there's okay, we get a rumor news. Okay, we get a rumor, and um, this rumor is that um, Pop Team Epic season two could be coming, but we are not sure. Wait, you mean like it hasn't been confirmed yet? Yeah, but it's on. But there's like a Pop Team Epic two on Mal, so um, yet there's no news about a season two. So it's extremely. Str so it's an extremely strange situation. I don't know. I mean, if if you want to do like a season two, you gotta make it a lot different than like what the first season did. Just don't like repeat the same old like you know skits like the the, the pop team cooking or bobo nemi me 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 or that shit. Oh yeah, like brought more free. Uh, yeah, brought more freelance um, uh, and. Independent and independent animators like um, change all of the um, recon skits, but keep like the um, normal adaptations of the gags. That would be like the perfect season two. And also, don't freaking loop. Don't get like a half hour time slot and just loop. Like the same thing again, just like just get like an eleven minute time slot. Yeah. Funny. Yeah, because if like a sh something. Yeah, it was funny the first time. Yeah, because like. <laughs> like I don't understand. Like a shit show like Our Girl can get like a um, f how. <gasps> And half our um, uh, time slot, but not pop team fucking epic. By the way, um, uh, did I say that our girl was shit? And and because it's and it's um, uh, a Diamanda show, so of course it's shit. I I don't, I don't care about that stupid can't really say it's shit or not, I'm not like... Uh, the studio that does Squid Girl. I've never seen Squid Girl. I dislike Squid Girl. Yeah. It's my own... It's my favorite unpopular opinion to say to people. Because... Uh, for some reason... My favorite unpopular opinion is saying I hate him. Um, I don't know, fucking either Ava or Utena. You hate all of Ikarara's shit. Utena is good. Oh. Yeah, I really hate Ikuhara's crap. Why? Because he's so formulaic. It's annoying, and I hate his forced symbolisms. Yeah. It never comes off as forced to me. To be honest, I think I prefer Unity Sato. He also, he also makes Yuri pretentious, and I don't want Yuri to be pretentious. To be honest, uh, like, Unity Sato is better than Ikurara because... Um, because silly faces is better than forced symbolism. You really? Wait, are you talking about the gutsy frog director? No. Okay, so Junichi. No. Okay, so Junichi Sato is like the um, 
I'm talking about, I'm comparing him to um, Ikuhara because he, they both, they were both like directors on Sailor Moon. And, um, but like Junichi Sato was like the director of Sailor Moon for like the f entire first season and the 13 first episode of R. And after Ikuhara kind of. Um, uh, um, we replaced him, and uh, like he, um, uh, like now Junichi Sato is kind of um, known for um, uh, his kind of goofy faces in um, uh, because he's the one who made like uh, Sailor Moon the um, uh, goofy face emperor that we know, and uh, also um, it's. It's why Ojomajo Doremi is also so, um, filled with um, silly faces, and even even his fucking healing shows like uh, Arya got them. It's crazy. Yeah, whatever. All right, let's get into the topic. Hiroyuki Imaishi. <laughs> Yeah. Yoroki Imaishi is probably one of the... Um, AKA uh, Japanese Bob Cleopid. He's probably one of the... I the, said AKA Japanese Bob Cleopid. He's probably one of the greatest minds if our, of our time, if not the... Um, the G, is, if not the second coming of Jesus in animation form, he um, he was born in nineteen seventy one, and uh, is and watched a lot of Gutsy Frog, Gundam, and other shits. Um, is. His biggest like um, uh, um, reference in uh, are like um, Blazing Transfer Student, Project Echo, um, uh, like his um, Gonna Guy, and uh, any and anything that comes from that comes from the USA. Oh, like what's his? Biggest like American influences. Adult Swim. Well, are we talking about Imaishi? Yeah, we're talking about Ima yeah. Imaishi, the well, love and savior. Fanny and Stocking was inspired by late night cartoons on Adult Swim and the Powerpuff Girls. Yeah, he just loves Cartoon Network. He's one of us. Yoshinari is yeah. kind of, to be honest, Yoshinari is like the uh, the Moe Brony um, guy, while um, Imaishi is like the um, f is the edgy um, uh, ed Cartoon Network lover. It's that's how I um, put it. So I could pretty much relate more to Imaishi because like. I'm more of a Cartoon Network fan than yeah. like a fucking brony or teenage robot kid. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I grew up with um, my life as a teenage robot and Angry Beavers. I was, I started as a, as a Nick kid, but um, I grew more as a Cartoon Network kid because after. Um, after that, I I got introduced to Camp Lazo and Foster Zone, and I fucking fell in love with th those two. But anyway, Hiro Yuki Imaishi started out as an in-betweener on Evangelion. Directed episode 5 of Cooley Cooley, actually. 
Okay. That's the best. That's the best episode of Fooly Cooly without a doubt. Um, I have to agree, actually. Okay, wait. Um, uh, wait, wait, wait. Um, uh, like, it's pretty. We we can't. You can't say whatever you want about um Eva, like um Jack, because you we know you because you just said it's pretty bad. It's bad in your opinion, but. At least it's kind of a good. The only thing I like about Ava's fuck the fucking mom bot. The mom bot. Oh, yeah, you No, well, her and the the, the freaking um, Mecca, you know, bot. Call her mom bot as a joke. Preferred the Twitter user that I follow, and also the unit one Shinji pilots. Yeah, Ava Unit 1 is a very iconic design. But, um... But, yeah, what were we going to say about me and Ava, Tris? At least the fact that, like, Imaishi started out with Evangelion is, prim is kind of like a blessing, because I don't think he would have been... Uh, he would have been recognized this quickly if he was, um... If he started out on um, a smaller show, because Eva was a, a fucking phenomenon, and and he um, became like a, a key animated, a pretty known, well-known key animator pretty quickly. Yes. So what he said was he started as like an in-betweener on Eva, then like became more or less a key animator on like later Gainax shows in the 90s and 2000s. And also a lot of like... And um, his was... Dead Leaves? Dead Leaves, yeah. It was a 2000 movie produced at Production IT with a number of Gainax staff named Leech Toshio and Yoshinari. I don't understand, like, why I did it at IG, but not at, like, Gainax. Because production IG co-produced Fooly Cooly and Eva. Um, okay. That, but it is really weird. Like, it wasn't a co-production between those two anyway. Um, I kind of, I kind of have, like, um, a bit of info, of info why it was done on, on IG. Okay, so actually, I think I heard like Dead Leaves was like a commission, um, uh, a commission for IG to make like something um, uh, that would like um, uh, be um, uh, f mostly um, uh, for a Western audience, and so that's why they brought um, Imaishi. And, uh, but yeah, like, it, uh, it's IG who got the commission and not Gainax, and uh, IG just brought um, Imaishi to just, like, do whatever he wants, <laughs> and uh, that's how um, Death Leaves was made. Yeah, well, also, like, the... It's kind of a shame that Dead Leaves... Okay, well, actually, let's talk about the plot of Dead Leaves, which I can't explain it because it is so fucking weird. Yeah. It's it might be the weirdest thing. It's the most gloriously incomprehensible prison break movie ever, and I love it. Yeah! Yeah. Well, one of the main characters literally has a TV head. And one of them has the drill bird dick. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I never aired on Adult Swim. It's a girl in the gun prequel. <laughs> to be. It's better than Gurren Lagon. That means it's not better than Gurren Lagon. Well, you know me, I'm, I'm a weirdo. It's better than Gurren Lagon. 
well, Durin Lagan doesn't have, well, wait, what is your guys' favorite scene in Deadly Sexually? Oh, man, um, it's been a while since I've seen it, I can't really recall, like, what my favorite moment was. Okay, so, I, for me, I saw it, like, I think is still the opening card for Chase. Oh, it's fucking amazing, um, so I saw it like in October on on YouTube actually. I saw fucking Deadlifts on YouTube. That's kind of uh, that's kind of funny to say that actually. And uh, also I saw it dubbed, and it was not a half bad dubbed. But anyway, um, uh, yeah, I say also the opening um, uh, the opening cars uh, ch chasing because it's some of the um, uh, best animation I've ever seen from the year 2004 yeah that was a great opening um, I guess I also liked the drill dick guy because he came from his drill <laughs> this, this fucking movie it's it's so weird, so raunchy, but it's also so good. It's perfect. It's perfect to like describe what Imaishi's style is. It's crude, hyperactive, mostly. That's what defines his style. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and that's why I love him so much. But um. Uh, also, um, okay, I, I was thinking of something and I lost it, that's always good. Also, yeah, the, the fucking soundtrack. Can we talk about the fucking soundtrack? Because, man, the fucking soundtrack. All of the Maishi stuff has amazing soundtracks. <laughs> yeah. Like, even Luluko would, didn't need... We didn't need it at all. A good soundtrack had a pretty mem has got pretty memorable um, uh, tracks in that. So um, that's how good. Oh, has one of my favorite things. Yeah, but. Uh, I, st I still say this isn't my deadliest uh, soundtrack. Isn't my favorite from Imaishi. That's coming a bit. Um, that's coming much later, and I'm not gonna spoil what it is. But uh, yeah, that was a. It was a fantastic di directorial debut. One. Do you do you guys want to move on to Goran Lagan? I do. Jack. Yeah, I want to move on. There's really not much to say about the Deadly, other than like if you haven't seen it, then you're you're missing out on a lot. Or if you don't like it, then it's fine. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean. Like, to be honest, like, if uh, people don't like a kit, I always can s say the excuse that it's his directorial debut, so of course it's kind of flawed. And uh, to be honest, I um, like recommend, I'd recommend like his other, st his uh, lighter stuff uh, anyway for um, uh, free for first timers. My first Imaishi work was... My first work was probably, um, the fifth episode of Fooly Cooly. Um, I didn't see Fooly Cooly until last spring, actually. And, um, for me it was Little Co. Yeah. Yeah, of course it was. Yeah, I mean, it was the very first show I... Look at Lulu Co. Little Co was the first show I saw season... Was. Luka was the first show I saw. See, I watched seasonally. The first I saw seasonally was Kill the Kill. <laughs> the first I saw seasonally was Attack the 
No, it was no, it was kill. I kill. Okay, so Gurren Lagan is a, a 2007 sh um, a mecha show that um, is um, a celebration of um, of the super mecha genre that was dying at the time. And I saw I only saw the first episode, and it's decent, I guess. You two, we watch we watch the entire thing. What do you think about Gurren Lagan? Honestly, it was love at first sight for me. When I first saw it, I thought it was pretty good. I mean, I wasn't as crazy about it, mainly because, like, once you've seen Panty and Stalking, you can't really go back. That's true. I got some saucy opinions about it. But this. I never really understood the hype for Pan for Gurren Lagann. Like, I could see why people like this, like, ultra testosterone injected like mecha show but you know it never really had the same effect on me as it did like other people I, I don't know it's that's understandable it's not really for everyone all I I I mean uh, thanks to um, the controversial um, sunglasses YouTube guy which I'm not gonna and name because he's a running gag in this podcast he um, uh, I know about how in 4chan at the time there was a war between um, Gurn Logan fans and Lucky Star fans Uh, that those are that's a war that I would never want to get in. And we, but uh, we, um, I mean, uh, if I, I wouldn't go to the war and just gonna t pick Team Damari sketch, so we are all good. Or you could just pick like Team Code Geass and just say fuck them both. <laughs> Yeah, but I don't. Uh, but Cody Gas doesn't interest me at all. So, but anyway, like um, the drills are back, but there aren't. But, but there's no come this time because it's a PG fourteen, uh, PG thirteen show. So um, no come is allowed. Yeah, it's a kid show. It's a baby show in Japan. Yeah. Airing in like a baby toilet. Yeah, it's airing on prime time. <laughs> In fact, that time slot actually messed up with the Hot Springs episode because they had to like edit it in like as like a fucking clip show. That's... Which when I first saw it, I didn't know. I watched the uncut version. But then when they aired it on Adult Swim here, they aired the freaking broadcast version of the dub. Damn. I actually love the girl who got dub. I saw it so good. I should have watched it dubbed originally because I probably would have liked it. I've seen bits of the French dub and it's pretty um, good. Kamina's voice is a pretty is it's pretty spot on, but I pre I prefer like a watching it either um, English dubbed or subbed first and maybe um, when I rewatch if I ever rewatched it watch it with the French dub so that uh, I can because like I want to be concentrated on what is uh, happening on my first viewing and then like um, I want to watch it in the French dub, so I don't have to um, think all that much. I'm sorry, I I gave you a a, a brain attack with my uh, dubs, my dubs Porky Pig talk because I can't speak. Let's just talk about our favorite moments and characters from Gurren Lagann. Can I say the entire show? I guess you could say like certain parts of the show that are like stuck yeah. at you. Yeah, I can say that. 
Okay, so as for me, we only we only watch like the very first episode. Um, okay, so I'm gonna like take something from the um, episode that I thought was the the best, and I'd say it's the aesthetic. Like, it's much more like normie styled than or than the other image he works, but it but it still looks really great and really well thought out. Um, you'd say it kind of kills the style of uh, Imaishi, but I think it blends well with his type of, uh, of directing, because it's still like um, uh, over the top, and uh, I like it. my mind about the shows that came out in 2007 yet it doesn't look dated at all compared to like stuff like Lucky Star Lucky Star still looks pretty good today but Gur and Magan is a near visual masterpiece like Lucky Star wasn't meant to look um, that great like if you compare it to Haruhi it's, it's not as uh, it doesn't look great as great though, like Lucky Star, uh, Lucky Star eyes, the the eyes, the eyes in Lucky Star w um, uh, aged a lot more, a lot better than Haruhi's. To be honest, I don't mind the eyes in Haruhi. It's a one in Conan that bothered me, but that's off topic. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm I know stuff, so I need to say them. Well, you know, maybe like if you want to like get rid of your stutter, just like get up, put a bunch of rocks in your mouth and just speak. I got like tissues, can I put that on my mouth? So you can get your better internet. Okay, I'll put a picture in my mouth now. No, don't do do it on your off time, not now. Ah, oh, it's fucking disgusting. But uh, anyway, before I um, did something stupid on. Um, well, I, I can't say on camera because there's no camera, but um, on um, on microphone, um, uh, we were s talking about how uh, McGurren Logan looks great today. Even though it's like 11 years I old. I just want to say, Ian, what, yeah. what did you like more the first half or the second half? I'd say the first half, but I still like the second half a lot. It gets perfectly strong in the final few episodes. <coughs> yeah. My fruit. My favorite bit was probably after, like, um, Simone's, um, progression till they, like, till, like, they did the Lord Genome. I thought that whole bit was pretty keen out. It was, you know, I love episode 15 in general. Yeah, and then it all nosedived when um, the show became about Rossi being a bitch. <laughs> I, I hated Rossi when I first saw the show. But, you know, the best thing about the second half was Yoko was finally an adult and not like a 14 year old. Yay for legalism. Oh, but seriously, Ian, what were your favorite bits from um, Gurren Lagann? I have a lot. When Simone sees the surface for the first time at the end of episode 1, and the Gurren is spinning around and we see the entire landscape, it was absolutely beautiful. Yeah, I agree. For someone who only seen that episode, No, no, it's fine. I'm already spoiled. 
I'm already spoiled. It's okay. Uh, what, what did you think of the ending of this show? Did you hate it or love it, Ian? I loved it, and I can bolt like a baby. <laughs> well, I didn't cry, because I don't cry during anime. I don't cry very often, but during my god, it just hit me so hard. I only cry at stuff that isn't supposed to make me cry. Because I'm stupid. Yeah, you are. Anyway, Pentius is talking is a 22. Is that it for lock on? <laughs> yes. So yes, what? yes, Pentius talking. I'm going to build the best, I get the best thing in my she ever did. It's actually my least favorite in my she, but I still like it. Really. I okay. gave it a 7. It's good. Well, is it because of, like, the humor? Yeah, the, the humor is kind of hit and miss for me. But actually, I love the characters. The character interactions are my favorite part of the show. Okay, so... Again, I only seen the first episode, and... I didn't... Tr I think at first... I think I didn't really li like the um, I didn't really like the humor at all when I first watched it. But I think if I rewatch it now, it would be like I would find this better than the first episode of Gurren Lagann. Like I, to be honest, I think the. Um, I have a feeling I like it more rewatch too. Like I. But to be honest, like the aesthetic of Pentiad's talking is a is a full ten out of ten, so uh, it it already got that on its belt, so it's already it's already like a it's already like a five it's already better than a five by default. Well, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that the show, if you basically like, you know, freaking Adult Swim style of humor the more like absurd raunchy stuff and not like the uncomfortable tim and eric crap you'll probably love painting and stocking i like squid bellies so maybe i'm i like it because i'm the only person on earth that likes squid bellies well yeah you'll you'll love painting and stocking except it's a million times better than squid bellies <laughs> I don't know why I, I I still don't know why I like uh, squid bellies. So my favorite thing about painting and stocking is like just not just like you know the whole freaking like design. I guess the art style, which I freaking love, like you know the geometric shapes and like the thick outlines. But I also really like the episodic nature of it all. It feels very much like a western cartoon in that regard, like. You don't really have to worry about like any storyline, even though they try to like force one in near the end of it, which was pretty stupid. Yeah, I, I just loved like how they would like get in these really fucking stupid and bizarre situations, like as like angels fighting ghosts, so they could like get these coins and return to heaven. <laughs> that was hilarious. But that's a hilarious part. Itself. Yeah, and it's that Belt is very kinky, even though he's a priest. No, no he's not just kinky, he's also a freaking pedophile. Well, he's a. Oh, yeah, well, he's. God. God. That's a pretty question. I mean, um, a priest with a pedophile, that's pretty common here in. I mean, he must be Catholic to be a, a pedophile priest. Well, it's the joke. Yeah. But yeah, I love the characters. I just love... If I was to ever make a show, I would probably model the characters after painting and stocking because they're just, like, two bitches and sluts who are just, like, terrible people, but they're so freaking entertaining. Though, if I had to be honest, stocking is best because, like, she's got bigger boobs and she eats sweets and she's not a freaking skank. Also, I loved her episode. Are you talking about the one where she fell for that ghost? Yeah, that one. And I also like how pretty much 
Yeah, I also love the whole structure. Like each uh, half hour episode has like two segments. Well, well, there was like the one the the, the debut of Scanny and Nissan. So that was a half hour, and then there was that one with like five segments. But remember, like the one weird episode about where Penny and Stalking have a fan. Wait, when you say I don't remember that one. It's weird to describe, like, this guy lived a mundane life, and he lived in a workplace, and this... Oh, that's the salary man one! Holy shit, I forgot that one! And they they looked so... That looked like something out of, like, a Satoshi Kon film. I know. Also, what I like about Pendy is talking, and that uh, perfectly, like, uh, capture the um, Western feel, and is that there's title cards! Yes, title cards, and not just the shit that the Japanese do, where they're like, Oh, here's the title of the episode, here you guys go. In the bottom left corner. <laughs> you know, I mean, like, some shows, like, you know, Madoka, and, uh... Kill I Kill, they did just generic title cards for each show. But Pan Stocky, they actually did like title art and it's fucking great. Yeah, I mean, it's. Yeah, I mean, it's. Also, the show's dub is brilliant. Yeah, the... Okay, here's the thing like, when I first. People. more I've seen more people talk about how great the dub is than when it originally came out, and I'm just like, really? Now you guys are talking about how great it is. The dub I is great. I that I mean, is now seven years old. Oh wait, it's eight years old. What well, then? No, the dub came out in 2012. Yeah, but the show itself is eight years old. Yeah. I'm actually surprised at how old it really is. Like, I can't recall anything else airing in like that fall 2010 season. Mm, let's see. There's Bakuman. Merry Christmas present. Bakuman aired the same season as um, no, Benchen no. Stalking. But yeah, uh, that was a great Christmas gift. Also. Because um, Benchen Stalking killed Gainax, basically. Yeah, because it was oh, a yeah. yeah, it was commercial. Everyone left guy next. Like it co- was a commercial failure, and uh, well, we got some. Um, there's that one guy who um, uh, like there's some people that uh, uh, that left um, uh, <laughs> that left for triggers. Some left for A1 Pictures and did like Idol Idol Master and. They're back for dallying the fucking Franks. For some for Mappa, and it was a, it was a full on diaspora, and but we got trigger thanks Pretty to that. Much. Penny and Stalky failed in Japan. It only really became popular as it did when it was brought over to America. Because it was. I'm m- disappointed that the Adult Swim crew said they would never show it. Yeah. But apparently it's too raunchy for them. <laughs> Which makes no sense because like they've aired crap like Assy McGee. Literally. <laughs> I guess the staff just doesn't like the show for a reason. No, it's weird because they've aired her in Log On and Kill I Kill and they love Fooly Cooly, but painting and stalking apparently is just too much for them. Maybe because of the pedophile thing, I don't know. No, I think it's because of the swearing. Because, like, they'd have to edit all the fucks and possibly cunts. I mean, they can get them with shit nowadays if they made it, like, TVMA. Also, um... I mean, also, um... Aside from, like, A.C. McGee, another, sh- another show that they made that makes their statement hypocritic a call is, like, Star- King Star King and Mr. Pickles, which are... Which I know are more, like, in the violence uh, type than, like, the uh, swearing type, but it's still, um... 
it's still like an edge. It's still much edgier than like panty and fuck and stocking. Like it's weird because like American TV is more happy to show violence. Japan's more willing to show like sexuality crap. And panty and stocking is pretty sexual, pretty language heavy. It's not really as violent as you think it is. But the violence is pretty cartoonish in nature. Yeah. There's not really much bleeding except for like you know the occasional nose bleed, but that's just a Japanese trope. Yeah. I'm sad that it's not, um, uh, it doesn't happen in real life because that would, uh, uh, that w would be kind of, um, uh, big. I mean, uh, imagine if like nose bleeding and uh, when you see s something um, uh, hot would be um, a normal thing in real life. How many people would like um, uh, be in the hospital because they, wa they went to, um, to a whorehouse? Tris, just, just stop. Please. Okay, okay. Stop. Okay. Yeah, I. This is basically me. When, whenever I do an AG joke, it's basically the worst thing ever. But back to panty and stocking. One of my, another favorite thing was like the mixed media crap. Like you know, whenever they would do their transformation, they would always be drawn more realistically. You know, they were actual anime pinups, and like whenever they would defeat the ghost, they would always get like some styrofoam model <laughs> and just explode it. I died laughing every time they did that. The best one was when Garter Belt exploded, and then, and then and then when he came back to life, they just rewound that, and he was like, God, my old. <laughs> I need to watch it. Yeah, Tris needs to watch it too. Since if he can watch Squidbillies and not get upset, then he can watch Pity and Stalking. Also, like, Chuck is the best, like, girl ripoff we ever had. Yeah, just. Ch they did the best invaders to the homage of anyone ever. Yeah. And it wasn't even an American who made it wonderful. <laughs> anyway, Kill a Kill. Okay, so Kill a Kill is basically the show if I start watching more than episode one, I think it's gonna be one of my favorite shows ever made with um, Attack on a Video. Too soon, too soon. But yeah, Kill la Kill is the most anime crap ever, and I love it. it, it it's so ridiculous. It puts Gurren Log on and even Panty and Shot stocking at times to shame, with just how outrageous it can get. And like, um, like, this is. <laughs> this is uh, basically the, the show where the inspiration for um, f that the um, biggest insp this is the show where the inspiration um, of Hiroki Maishi um, from the 80s kind of um, uh, comes back like you um, uh, like the um, uh, kind of like school 
this uh, fighting school thing c kind of comes from like blazing trends for students like um, the um, basically the personalities like the um, character some of the characters um, uh, personalities come from project echo and uh, and basically, it's like the um, the best uh, cutie ani. It's the best cutie ani, cutie ani anime ever made. I mean, because, um, like, it's, like, I think Kill la Kill is the, um, uh, is the only Imaishi show that, um, both got amazing, like, um, uh, Imaishi-style direction, and also, uh, but also it got, like, the, um, uh, some of the best, like, um, visual, um, uh, uh, visual storytelling of any of his shows. I definitely agree. Visually, it's the best looking of his stuff. Yeah, I need to... I never understood why people said it looked ugly, because, like, I really love the off-model stuff. <laughs> Probably because like, most people are just used to, like, anime showing, like, just pretty faces and, like, gorgeous looking. Backgrounds, but or, I mean, Kill Kill has pretty gorgeous backgrounds. You know, they all backgrounds. Actually, like I, I, I've like, um, recently like learned that Kill a Kill was actually like low budget compared to was like, low uh, yeah, because like it's. Because it makes sense. Well, I mean, that makes sense since, like, Trigger was still just starting out. Like, wh when you... Trigger had only made three animated projects. Inferno Cup, which was, like, zero budget. Um, uh, Little, Witch Little Witch Academia, that was um, funded by the government. And Turning Girls, which was just, like, um, uh, Inferno Cup, uh, zero budget, so... So of course the first thing they make. So yeah, like the major, the first major project is like you said, Yen, kill, la kill. Fuck this bad. Fuck this. Fuck this. Can I just say that... I still think episode 4 was one of the best moments in the show. Episode 2. No, 4. Episode 4 is pretty great. Yeah. Also... I also really liked, um... Shit. Um... Episode 14. That, yeah, that was the one, um... What happened to that episode again? I think that was the one with, like, you know, the other high school, with Honoji, like, attacking the other high schools. Oh, I see. So the tri-school, right? Yeah, that one. To be honest, it kind of dragged for me by so late the art. I wasn't as crazy about like the tournament arc though. It did have like its moments, especially like Ryuko, Ryuko's fight with um, Gamagori. I love Ryuko's fight with No No No. No No No. no. Uh, I say No 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 by X. That was a good one. Um, yeah, what are you going to say, Triss? Um, well, I've only seen episode one. Just like Gorin Lagan and Penny and Stocking, but it's fucking amazing. But man, is it fucking amazing! And man, does um, um does Mako is the 
uh, is one of the um, uh, okay I'm gonna say hottest girl from in my Ishi show but um, in but if each time when I talk about anime girls um, uh, like um, uh, one of um, uh, one of Jack's brain cells dies in the coma Let me just say this, Mako is your age, so therefore you would probably love her more than Lulu Ko. Yes, I think it's great. I mean, there Actually, now that I think about it, I was never as... I was never as crazy about, like, having a specific wife as it was for, like, you know, <laughs> shipping. <laughs> No, you got wife. You got all your. No, you got waifus, Ian. It's all the um. It's all the pink air. It's all the pink air girls that exist in anime. Pink hair girls are Pink pal. Uh, pink. St pink. Pink is a cool color. I got a few um, pink haired waifus in my uh, waifu grid. Spending all day talking about that. Okay. No, she's technically like you know two tones. She's got like you know pink and purple. And it fits very well. Yeah. yeah. But Mako is number one waifu forever because like I love her bubbly, optimistic personality and the fact like. She's kind of a airhead, but she has like her own way of like you know rationalizing things, and also, also she's got a pretty big rack. Even though I'm probably gonna go to jail for saying that. If you don't like count her mom, um, Sukuyo. There is like literally no character in this show that annoys me except for like the villains and I'm just pretty much the po and I really freaking hate them, which shows how effective they were. I hear some pokes, I hate them. I mean and I fucking hate Nui, she was an annoying bitch. And I freaking hate Roggy the most because like she's she's the worst mom ever. <laughs> Oh yeah, I think I remember no, being. Say, go <laughs> I remember like um, being uh, spoiled about yeah. Kill a Kill, um, and the fact that um, you know Ryuko and Satsuki are sisters. I got sp for f I got spoiled by Anime America. I feel bad for the people that ship them. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because you know, um, if um, if our anime memes um, told us anything, it's that um, anime fans got extremely bad taste in jokes. I mean, look at me. Yeah, you do, and I do too. Ian's the only good one. Yeah, because he, we are we are taste in jokes. We are only saying that because you are, we are, you are our guest. No, just kidding. You're actually great. Um, but yeah, and then then what did you, Ian? What did you think of that one scene from episode sixteen? Yeah. 
Yeah, it was a scene. I can't explain it, but yeah, I can see what purpose it's purpose it served in the plot. But really, the, the, the best thing about Kill Out Kill to me was that it actually did air on my American TV on Adult Swim with pretty much few edits if I remember correctly. Like, they cut out a few scenes that were pretty questionable to show. But overall, it was pretty treated well. And even though they didn't show the OVA, I don't really know. Uh, and I'm still here. Also, I think, um, if also read Mako for life. Me, Mako for life. No, just kidding. Um, uh, I'm not actually. No, kidding. Ryu, go Mako for life, you dummy. I used to shit them for a while. And then you got bored. Yeah. Speaking of like Ryu and Mako, um, the, um, the like the the theme song, like the, uh, the like, a uh, uh, Mako's theme, you know, and the, uh, oh wait, uh, how is it called again? I, I got it on my phone, let me just look it up. I don't know, I've never really, like, kept up with the soundtrack for the show. Oh, I, I like it. But yeah, like the um, freaking s the that freaking s and that freaking soundtrack. Oh my lord! Yeah, that soundtrack. I. By the way, um, Ian. Ian had to like go for a minute. Yeah, I mean, it's understandable. Have a good day. He had to like go for a minute, he'll be back. Yeah, I know that. It's I just wanted to revive a dead meme. No, please. The check this, this has been a disaster, like me being the check meme is great. We're, I don't we've been get interrupting you. people. Sorry, sorry, and your connection has been pretty spotty. I've been being a jerk, we're both interrupting people. Oh, it's back! <laughs> yeah, cut this bit out. Okay, okay. We were talking about how shit this podcast was. Remember, but uh, anyway, the soundtrack on my horde. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I don't know what to Wait, are you guys there? Yeah. And I don't know why we even have these long pauses. Yeah, I'm probably gonna edit some of some of the longest. I mean, I can do that now. Now that I'm yeah. doing it on Audacity, because before it was like just. It was a pain, and I just gave up because it's it's just fucking so hard, and I'm not like spending twenty minutes on uh, to uh, remove a, a a five seconds blank. But okay. but any is that it for kill a kill? I guess. I haven't seen it, so I, we can't talk about no, it. Tris is, no, Triss's favorite Imaishi anime. 
for now because when I complete the um, yeah. kill I kill it's gonna probably um, uh, a change so Space Patrol Leluco, the one that introduced me to that wonderful world that world that is trigger animation. That was a show that aired in twenty sixteen with like, you know, five minute episodes of thirteen five minute episodes and it was about just basically just like a huge inside cotton thing regarding Trigger. It's the infinity war of uh, Trigger animation. Exactly. Good. <laughs> like, now I'm... Oh, man. Now I'm thinking of, like, Novakun who, um, uh, like, disappears and he says, like, uh, um, uh, Luluku, I don't feel so good. <laughs> so, yeah, um, Luluku is some, um, some middle school girl who's thirsty for this guy for some reason. And she joins the space patrol to become, like, a cop. For justice! Yeah, and she turns into a gun because that just happens. Even and she makes friends with this bratty alien bitch. Yeah, it's a gyru, but because she's an alien. And it's... then she realizes her mom's this really hot pirate MILF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man. Ahead of his time. Oh, a frozen head. Yeah, and and the freaking and then they just go to like different. And then they start going to like different planets. They're just basically just other trigger universes. Like they meet, like one where Luluco's boyfriend's just some doppelganger, and it's like he's basically just made out of like life fibers. It's like kill, kill, kill. kill. And don't lose your ways playing. They actually play before my body is dry. That was the best part. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And oh. I think the red text. And I think like the red kanji appeared. It did. On yes. The script of the will to fight. Seni Soshi. Seni Soshi. Also, it says like stuff. Well, it says um, words like stuff, and <laughs> like it's just a big parody of Kill a Kill, and then it's just crossovers, which is kind of it's it's kind of weird. And that then they go to like the Little Witch Academia world and meet Susie. Yeah. And then they. Why only Susie? I don't know why. Because. Um, uh, I mean, she's the, the one character that seems to adapt the best to like the Luluko art style because if you look at it closely, it's um, n not like the same uh, look um, for Susie. It's like more, a, it's like a bit more sim. It's a lot more simpler so that she blends in with the um, other characters. Which is sad because I would really like like the actual <laughs> the Susie as she um, uh, looks in the um, actual um, uh, OVAs, <laughs> but uh, to um, be a no, it's g going nowhere. I mean, at and least. Then what, what did they do after? They, uh, um, which, um, it's, um, um, Sex and Violence with Max Speed next. Yeah, Sex and Violence with Max Speed! They literally just, like, inserted them into clips of the short itself. <laughs> so you, so I actually watch, oh, so that, that means I actually watched the uh, short. That's pretty interesting. 
And there, and then after like the crossover arc, there is like, after the crossover arcs, like Lulu Ko dies and meets Inferno Cup. Yeah. But the best thing about Inferno Cup... You know, I'm disappointed that they also didn't do crossovers with, you know, the, the, the shitty shows like um, Eno Battle, Ninja Slayer, Keys Niver. Um, oh, actually... I, could, I mean, no, Darling in the... Yeah. Darling in the Franks Okay, yeah, so, know, um, but, you know, technically... They ever made a second season of Lulu Technically, like, um, um, okay, so technically there was, um, a Luluko, um, a Kisniver cr crossover because, um, during, like, um, while, um, Luluko was on its crossover arc, there was, like, um, in, in Kisniver, there was, like, a, a background cameo of Luluko and Novakun. So technically, it still happened, and I think um, for Inno Battle and Ninja Slayer, it's because they can't um, crossovers with stuff that aren't originals. Yeah, yeah. Keys. That the only good thing from Keys Knifer, Luko and Nova's appearance. I like the directing of Keys Knifer. And also, like the and the for I'm on I'm still at the part of Kinaver that still that it, that is good. I haven't watched the disappointing parts yet, and I'm scared. Yeah, you're a scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. No, I I I I try to like do um. I don't. I don't know which like gra game grump character stuff I well, I'm trying to imitate, but I'm doing very badly. You know I can do that too. Um, it, we know a girl who really likes Lulu Ko. Oh, you mean Zoe? Yeah. Yeah. And we know Zoe, right? Yeah. yeah. Zoe is the best. But, yeah, that... That's... Is that it for, like, Imaishi shit? What, what, what crap does he got coming in the future? Promare! Yeah, I mean... What is... I don't know what's Promare about. We only got this, um... The same, like, um, promo art that was shown at Anime Expo 2017. Oh fuck! I didn't. I, I didn't hear that. Like um. Fuck it. Can you repeat what you just said, Ian? So do you want to just end it here? Uh, just wait for him. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But to be honest, I kind of, I'm. I think it's. It. I think like this um, little conversation that we had is was 
pretty interesting. I mean, we for once we actually um, learned a bit, learned a, a bit about ourselves, and not um, did this kind of joke thing where I do something stupid. You are annoyed. I'm do another thing stupid. I shudder. You know. Yeah, and I'm just like the, you know the 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 the, one, the Nolan, and I'm tired of shit and just want to talk about stuff where I can like gush about dumb crap I like. You know? Or vent about Cora. <laughs> I don't want. I've never seen Cora. Yeah, but so I can't basically like make fun of it like he does. Yeah. <laughs> I'm probably gonna start rewatch. I'm probably gonna start rewatching um, uh, Rebel Taxi stuff when he um, upload when he um, uh, uploads his new um, non podcast video because he started. Oh no, he's back! God damn no! Yeah, I'm. I'm pretty. I'm. Maybe he's. Maybe the yeah the. I get this. Made him like um, um, uh, made him so that he can now um, put a bit more effort on it, on his stuff. I thought the DXP video was pretty good. Has he? Yes. Was cringy. Yeah, I mean the the DXP yeah. stuff was pretty uh, cringy. So um, and. Um, so it was kind of an easy target, but you know it's it's something like a v old school a pen would talk about. It, it was kind of a throwback to that. Um, I tell you, I bet I I want him to like trim the fat out of his like out of his upcoming stuff. Like, where where Ian? Where were you? Oh. Oh, you're back. No, it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Um, uh, we were talking about um, life decisions. Pretty much. But yeah, is that, is that it for um, Imaishi shit? Oh, that's... <laughs> Imaishi. Actually, let's talk a little bit more about Pan's return. I, I was really digging that. Oh, so, wait. Am I gonna... Uh, am I gonna not edit uh, the uh, most, the um, personal stuff uh, so that we get the pen stuff? But yeah, edit the personal stuff. Just leave in the stuff where we talk about pan with you, so wait, me, and Ian. Yeah, Pre because, almost. Okay, so, so, about to go so premium. I think what I'm gonna do is like I'm gonna record after that. Um, a thing where I s basically explain why we, um, uh, I, we where I explain that um, we um, uh, Ian like cut it again and that we um, uh, were talking ab something about a bit personal when we talked about something that could be um, used for the podcast so um, uh, that's why the um, uh, transition is gonna uh, be pretty awkward I think it's gonna. I think I'm gonna do that. It seemed like the best solution, but yeah. Pen pizza, the um, what used to be the best um, um, internet reviewer um, in the universe that kind of um, went downhill in 2017. I'd made a hiatus because he, you know, because he made a burnout. And now he's back, and I'm scared. Is he gonna be like um? Is, is he gonna come back in a major way, or just gonna go back to the um, usual quality that he um got acc accustomed to in the later month? I guess I could probably explain this a little bit better so i've started noticing around 2016 that when pan's videos were getting longer they were ten they tended to get bloated with you know 
stuff like you know extending video clips like going on long tangents where we really tried to like read a copy pasta and like make a really dumb joke and also being more of a genuine like cringe lord and it was just like you know really pathetic because like his videos still have like really interesting points to think about it's just that there's a lot of fat that needs to be trimmed from his shit which basically prevents me from like enjoying them fully i'd say the best stuff really the last video of his that i would actually watch like more than once was his like top 10 worst animation moments of 2017 that one was like a little bit better when it came to like you know avoiding all the you know filler but yeah it's but 2018 hasn't been a good year for pan he's done like his reviews have been pretty shitty like his abducted one that, that one was like god and the dxp one was just a huge disappointment so now and also like his last I guess non-podcast related thing like another failed animation pilots thing that one wasn't really good as well since he had to go on that thing about Butch Hartman which was pretty fucking annoying yeah so yeah he took like a month long hiatus is it I'm I hoping I'm I hoping he is going for the better now because it's he seemed like fucking tired Ever since like um, October, last October, he was already um, uh, showing that he was um, uh, really tiring out. I mean, uh, the the whole point of the animation motivation video was basically um, uh, was basically because he was um, uh, he he was kind of a shitty um, uh, mood because uh, of. How much work he needs to do. Yeah. Ian, have you seen any of Pan Pizza's videos? Uh, no, I haven't actually. You should watch it. Um, I'd recommend like the videos about Gurren Lagan and Painty and Stocking because it fits, because you know. It's one of the few anime reviews he did that are extremely rewatchable. I'd say watched a bunch of his stuff from like 2011 or 20 to like, I don't know, 2015. That's like the golden years for him. Yeah. In my book. In, ignore the... Um, 20 no, say, I'd say 2012 to 2015. Yeah. Because 20, 2011 still had the shitty doodles um, uh, era. Yeah. Also, the podcast hasn't been good as well. It's gotten a lot of really like mediocre topics, and the guests haven't been as exciting. Like, man, he's man, he's got some really questionable people, like Gamer from Mars, Digi Bro. Um, <laughs> Oh yeah, I side tape. I side tape. I th I think oh, like he, the he's he's don't ask. Yeah, I think the um, the three best um, um, pa pa pizza party podcast guests that from recent time were like um, Monkey Jones, Robo Bodies, and uh, Nesca. I know a guy from a server who knows Nesca. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've already found Nesca to be um, a quite a, a cool gal because she uh, she likes the um, the best French anime ever made, Last Man. Just kidding, but but seriously, like the last one is good. Watch it. It's it's on. I think it's on Kiss Anime. Oh, no, Kiss Cartoon. Kim Cartoon. Sorry. I'm so I'm so used to yeah, say. Last man, got it. Yeah, it's an action cartoon, so 
and for adults that looks that actually looks amazing so um, uh, since you Americans don't have that much of that you um, uh, you can at least have this thing from us we are gladly gonna I can't find the I can't find the title uh, I can't find like the show's name last man it's but um, all um, last it's not, it's all one word, but, um... Okay. Last, oh, oh, I found it. It's based off a comic. Yeah, that was basically, uh, that basically is made like a manga, so that's why I say it's a French anime. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's... Anime inspired, but it's actual. But you know, it's not like Kappa Mikey anime inspired. No, just, no. All right. Um, okay, is that it? Uh, I guess. Is that it for everything? Yeah. Alright, guys. This was a complicated podcast. All right, um. Well, thank you to yeah, have, uh, thank you to have watched the podcast thing. And I know that the next episode's plans have been screwed up. Yeah. I don't know what we are going to do. Maybe like a regular, but maybe what we are going to do like the um, the topic for episode eight this um, uh, on the um, uh, on the episode seven, and I. Could pr probably think of another, uh, so that I can think of a guest we can have with um, uh, with proper time. You could get like a Twitter mutual. Oh yeah, I I could do that. Um, I'm already I'm gonna look at like the um, uh, at how many. <laughs> Twitter mutual we both had that I got on my like f on on my friends list on uh, Discord. Yeah, okay, we're, we're signing out now, guys. Let's see you once again. Who are you, people? Um. Okay. Oh, wait, I'm Trace, and maybe I could get Cosmodor to be honest. Yeah, I'm friends with him on. Uh, I'm. I'm. Um, we are mutual on Twitter, and we are, uh, and we are friends on um, uh, Discord. So, so prob we could probably get him. I mean, I'm probably. I'm gonna ask him like. Try to get him on. That'd be great. Yeah. So I'm Tris. This was uh, Jack, and I'm gonna give the last word to Ian. This is Ian. Ian, say yeah. something. Hello. Well, this was fun. Hope to see you all around sometime. Thanks. I'm really sorry about how I acted. It's cool. Also, I feel like this was a bit too long. Uh, it's okay. Yeah, it's probably like the so one. Of, it's probably one of our longest podcasts, anyway. I mean, the longest podcast is also. Well, you're gonna like trim out a lot of the fat. Yeah, because I'm not Dribble Taxi. Goodbye. <laughs>